In Cambodia, teacher volunteers provided rice and other daily supplies for the poor and handicapped people. In Xing Tianjin Si Hall, we take a look at the stories of the newly certified city volunteers. Selamat datang ke Daya Headline, saya Simon Gan. Terima kasih menyertai sesi berita kita. In Cambodia, multiple rice distributions were held for the poor and handicapped people. Volunteers also took the opportunity to share the story of the Bamboo Coin Bank, hoping that the receivers of the aid supplies can have a turn of hands and help others who are also in need. Arriving one by one, handicapped people are seated with the assistance of volunteers. Before receiving Tsuchi supplies, a speech was given. Every day you can put in two cents per day, saving up to six cents a month. Can everyone do this? While we receive help, we have to notice that we can also help others. Saving two cents a day, which is equivalent to 0.7 NTD, one may save 60 cents a month using the Bamboo Coin Bank. The collected kind funds at the venue will be immediately given to the Handicap Association for them to pay water and electricity bills. Even if we donate two cents, but if we collect love from hundreds of people, we will slowly accumulate and make a great amount, right? Pichia Ray, who has deformed limbs, always puts a smile on his face as he shows positive energy. Don't look at me like this. With motivation, it's possible. I can still pick and sell plastic bottles and contribute to the Bamboo Coin Bank. Receiving aid and helping others, everything is interconnected as attendees collect 40 kilograms of rice and other living supplies. For three months, many handicapped friends of ours, because of the sufficient food supply from the distribution, lived great and liked the rice from Tsuji. During the pandemic, life got tougher, but I'm glad that Tsuji gave us rice and I believe that it only gets better from this point on. A health check was also held on the day of distribution, and waterproof stickers with vegetarian promoting slogans are attached to tuk-tuks. Getting the word out locally, this is Suji in Cambodia, helping people in need. Suji volunteers from Saramba, Malaysia, assisted flood victims to clean their homes, distribute hot food and condolence cash to 170 families that were severely affected by the disaster. This aid lasted for five consecutive days, wishing them an early restoration of their homes. This represents all of our love as we give everyone our blessings. Condolence cash and a blanket were presented to every family affected by the disaster. Your willingness to help me is deeply touching. There was a severe flood in Sarabam, Malaysia. Volunteers assisted the affected households to clean their homes for five consecutive days and sent condolence cash to 170 families that were more severely affected. The disaster this time is very serious. We rely on ourselves, but volunteers in Sorban are not strong enough, so the first thing we did was contact relevant units to get this list of affected residents. Then we served the two hardest hit areas as soon as possible. Approximately more than 170 households received condolence money and blankets. We have a group of brothers and sisters who have these days been giving silently. So everyone has no regrets, and the same faces have been showing up these days. The flood disrupted the lives of the people, but at the same time, it also gave everyone a sense of relief about danger of natural disasters and a reminder to cherish their good fortune. Originally, our heart was thinking we're sponsoring those in need. I didn't know it would come back. On the contrary, I've benefited again. You help others, and it will come back to you. We still have a lot of things we own. Maybe we have lost our home or lost a lot of property, but we still have our lives. This is the most important thing. Disasters are happening all over the world now. It does not only affect humans, even animals are also hurt. We humans should take the responsibility to avoid disasters from happening again. 
beli barang yang keperluan, keperluan. Kalau ada lebih, saya pun boleh bantu orang. Wah, Many had to overcome adversity to feel their own happiness and the warmth of volunteers. Thankfully, they know they are not alone on the road to rebuilding their homes. According to the report by the Malaysian Public Health Bureau, for every five Malaysian adults, one of them is a diabetes patient. We should not overlook the risk of diabetes as we need to reduce the amount of sugar intake, adjusting our eating habits and carry out more exercise to maintain good body health. A bowl of rice contains about 60 grams of sugar. Adding side dishes in a drink, most Malaysians consume more than 50 grams of sugar a day, suggested by the World Health Organization. According to Malaysia Public Health Bureau's 2019 National Health Report, there's a diabetes patient among every five adult Malaysians. In other words, 3.9 million Malaysian adults have diabetes. We should not overlook the risk associated with diabetes. We can reduce sugar intake to control blood glucose level. Choice of food plays an important role in controlling blood glucose. According to the Public Health Bureau, in our plate, half of the plate should be vegetables, then another one-fourth of the plate should be coarse food. The other one-fourth should be protein. The best source of protein comes from beans, nuts, and seeds. Besides, the adjusting the eating order is helpful to controlling blood glucose level. We can eat vegetables first, we first eat the protein and high-fiber food, then we can slow down the digestion of processed starch. This way, our glucose level won't rise so sharply. Dr. Key also suggests that people can do some exercises, such as walking, riding a bicycle and taking the stairs, to control blood glucose level. According to Malaysia National Diabetes Research Institute, for people over the age of 45, if they lack exercise or are overweight, they should test their blood glucose level. This way they can avoid becoming diabetes patients. Chia Chun Hien and Wan Loi Ming were once diabetes patients, but they have been able to control their blood sugar levels by changing their diet and exercising. For Chia, a change in mindset is important as it helps with controlling his own desires, which also helps control his blood glucose levels. Here's more. After I was diagnosed with diabetes, I realized that soda sugar levels are very high. It's like 90% sugar water. Before I was diagnosed with diabetes, I eat very unhealthily like most people, eating food which are high in carbohydrate, almost finish all the soup every time I eat, is converted to blood sugar very fast. From when I was little, I loved drinking soda pop. I'd at least drink one can a day. If I didn't drink one, I'd feel uncomfortable the whole day. When I was 30-something, by donating blood, I found out my blood sugar level was really high. When I was 45 years old, I lose a lot of weight. My vision are also blurred sometimes. I went for a blood test. My blood sugar is very, very high. So the doctor confirmed that I am a diabetic. In the beginning, I listened to the doctors and started taking medication to control my blood sugar levels. I also changed what I ate. I began eating less and more meals, as well as more veggies. I would exercise each day and decrease my soda intake. I started drinking sugarless soda and then slowly switched to only drinking it every two or three days, to quitting it altogether. I used about three years' time to adjust my blood sugar level, and I have just maintained a good level. I do eat out very often, but I prepare vegetables to make my meal outside healthier, most of which I take raw because it will not digest too fast, so it is healthier for diabetic. It may be a slight challenge at the beginning, but as I go along, I got used to it because I knew this has to be done. I managed to control it with diet and exercise only without any medication for first 10 years. The blood test will always tell me that it's within the healthy range. This is Chong Kwa Si's yoga. I try to stay as active as possible the whole day. My office is a double-story building. I am at the ground floor. I will always use the washroom on the first floor, climb the stairs. I take a longer route to the washroom. So in that way, I keep active and I also burn more sugar in the blood. 
Besides the physical aspects, the mental aspects of life must be adjusted as well. We need to live in the moment and let go of worries. This way, we can resist the temptations when faced with foods we like to eat. We can control our eating desires and not be influenced by external forces. This is a good mental preparedness that helps to control my diabetes. Learn as much as possible about the illness, especially about food. Eat more healthy things than unhealthy things, no matter what. The healthy lifestyle, the healthy eating habit has to be complied to stay healthy. In Malacca, a Tsuji Kai recipient passed away, leaving her daughter, Theo Shio Mei, who shut herself off from the world. Tsuji volunteers went to care for her and assisted her in arranging her mother's funeral. Volunteers arranged her to stay in a senior home to help care for the elderly, extending her love for her mother to other elders. After her loving mother passed away, the daughter, Zhang Xiu Mei, lived alone, resisting starting a new life. Don't be afraid someone will cook it. She'll lose her temper if she's upset. It doesn't matter, she'll be fine. Just let her be. It's like a child losing her temper. Malaka Tsuji volunteers have been caring for her and assisting in her mother's funeral. Then they need to arrange Zhang Xiu Mei to stay in the Xiangnan Senior Citizen's Home, which is more appropriate for her. Because it worries me, if she stays alone in the house, Tsuji will arrange a better place for her to stay. Just like before she stayed here, she took care of her mother only. But if she stays there, she can take care of many other people's mothers. She can give of herself to help the elders there. After a three-hour drive, they arrived in a new environment. Zhang Xiu Mei can learn a professional skill, but she kept on holding volunteers' hand and felt nervous about a new place. We have gone through many challenges to bring her here, including today we still worry about whether she can accept it or not. But this is good for her, and she can stay in a safe place. We'll worry about her safety if she lives alone in that house. Also, there's no one to take care of her. When she stays here, someone will take care of her. I hope she can adapt to it. The senior home is very nice. It's safe, clean and comfortable. My cousin stays here. I feel relieved. Zhang Xiumei is about to start a new life. I will learn to extend the love for her mother to more people. At the Xingdian Jingsi Hall, the annual year-end blessing ceremony was held recently. It is also the time where volunteers are being officially certified as Tsuji volunteers. Today, we take a look at the stories of a few newly certified Tsuji volunteers. Dharma Masters from the Jingsi Abode bless the newly certified Tsuji volunteers as this day is where the Tsuji family becomes bigger every year. In a charity organization like Tsuji, all other volunteers will always give you strength and encouragement, giving you the will and determination to head down the Bodhisattva path. It is truly heartwarming. The spirit of enduring hardship as portrayed by the Master will give me the strength and encouragement to walk down this Bodhisattva path in the years to come. Gao Zhengyuan, who just became a certified volunteer this year, has 11 other family members who are already certified city volunteers. He said that with the help of his brother, he started attending training courses and changed his bad habits that he has in the past. I have changed a lot. I do not scold foul words anymore, and I've also quit drinking alcohol. I've also quit gambling. Seven certified volunteers from Penghu took the plane and arrived a day before the ceremony. As they were rehearsing for the sutra adaptation performances, they also have a sense of calm in their hearts. Previously, I took the plane over to Taiwan. Whenever I see the mountain, I would feel very sad. I don't know why. Now I won't have the feeling anymore. Maybe it's because I have finally found my spirit's home. The certified volunteers have vowed to shoulder the burden of the master in purifying the hearts and minds of the people. It is hoped that in the future, these volunteers can be more determined and dedicated along the path of Tsuji. To help the people affected by the disasters, the elders at the Zhunan Long-Term Care Center raised funds by donating to the bamboo coin banks and made vegetarian dumplings to be sold for charity. Here's more. 
The screen was showing the scene of Typhoon Goni in the Philippines. Together with the master's teachings, this is the gathering day for the elders at the Zhu Nansi Level Long-Term Care Center. Because of the current epidemic, it's difficult for us to go there, so we can only send our thoughts to them to let them feel the love of Taiwan. After listening to the volunteers' message, the elders donated generously. Seeing the flooding in the Philippines and the kids there, I couldn't bear it. I felt sorry for them. You guys brought bamboo coin banks here, and I'm very happy to contribute. Everyone not only donates money to Bamboo Kong Bank, but also put their love into actions to cut ingredients, make the stuffing, and make vegetarian dumplings for fundraising, extending the power of kind action. I have always felt that the elderly are being served, but today they are willing to give of themselves to donate money and efforts. This touched me a lot as we have developed a good relationship with them for so long. I hope that these seniors bodhisattvas can invite their relatives and friends to respond to this good act together, extending the power of love to raise funds for the Philippines. In Nanzhou, Zhiji volunteer Lin Jingguo specializes in mechanical maintenance. When the recycling station started, a complete raindrop collecting system was designed. Lin Jingguo also designed a flexible awning for volunteers so that they can be protected from sunshine and rain while doing recycling. We don't have to touch the water tap. Stepping on this would do the job. Stepping on the traditional sewing machine, water comes out from the pipes, and there's this water pump. This is flexible because it can stretch and rotate. These water sources all originate from the raindrop collecting device set on top of the recycling station. We can use the water for flushing toilets, cleaning the ground, washing gloves, and watering the flowers. We don't have to use electricity, we just use a pipe and we're good. Nanpu Recycling Education Station is located in Nanto County's Chaotun Town. It first started in 2011, and at that time, a raindrop collecting system was designed. We have nine water buckets now, and the raindrops collected allow for a use up to four to five months. We don't have to use tap water. In two months, around 1,400 people came here to do recycling, and the water cost for that duration was around 10 US dollars. Sichi volunteer Lin Jingguo specializes in machine maintenance, as he has plenty of ideas in eco-friendliness. Like the spring bed created fence, it is also his idea. No money spent. It allows airflow, and when a typhoon comes, it won't fall. Once we circulated this around the station, plastic bags, paper, and lighter things won't fly over to the neighbors. There's also this awning designed by Ling Jingguo because he sympathizes with volunteers. The awning covers sunlight and rain. It has two functions. Below, it has wheels, and when people come, we can push this around, and when they are done, they may push it back here. Brother Jingguo does a lot of creative crafts and gives to us recycling volunteers. The items are convenient and pretty cool. He seems to have a talent in crafting, and whenever he sees something, he will think about the theories behind making this machine. Lin Jingguo and his wife, for three generations, contributed at the Nanpu Recycling and Education Station. They treated this as their second home, as Lin Jingguo sleeps here often. I worry about the recyclables being stolen. I sleep at home and do the same here. When there is any activity, I can be up and check what's going on. Sincere, focused, responsible, and endless creativity, Lin Jingguo demonstrates the spirit of recycling. This has led other volunteers to do recycling here with peace and convenience. In Taiwan, although waiting for a garbage truck becomes a daily routine for Taiwanese people, there are still people who chase the garbage truck after work. A vendor combines IoT and cloud payments into an intelligent garbage bin, as citizens no longer need to have to worry about disposing garbage. Follow a report as we learn more. Is it tiring to follow the garbage truck daily? With the swipe of an easy card and throwing the trash in, everything is set. 
We actually use the IoT along with our system. Yes, we use the Easy Card for payment purposes in the cloud, and the future citizens may see where the services are via the app in their phones. The service station runs 24/7. Besides domestic garbage, several other types of garbage may be recycled by the iTrash machine. In the categories of recycling, for example, bottles and cans, like this machine we have here, we put PET bottles, tin cans, and aluminum cans in it will be identified automatically as PET bottle, tin can, or aluminum can. Yes, it appears that there are 10, and then the money will be added directly to the Easy Card. Putting the bottle into the machine and scanning the barcode to identify the amount and type, determining if it's plastic, tin can, or aluminum can. Once the bottles are inside the machine, it goes through compression. With the IoT and cloud payment system, garbage disposing can be more technological. Within the machine, there is an electronic weight system that gives a payment amount according to the weight, Providing fairness and convenience, citizens are happy receiving the money from the machine. This machine, which is the size of a small room, represents the former structure of iTrash. We call this part the garbage freezer. It is also called W House, in short for waste house. As I have mentioned before, garbage will ferment, so we use a technology that maintains the room under 10 degrees Celsius to store garbage. Therefore, it wouldn't go through fermentation and produce bad smells. Inside, there is a freezing equipment and a simple sorting window. This machine benefits citizens who cannot meet a garbage truck's time. Originally a garbage disposing machine specialist, Liu Hairi thought that if she could use the same technology for a community, it would be beneficial and eco-friendly. Because many citizens are unable to cooperate with the garbage truck schedule, so they may store trash at home. One or two days to a week, especially in summer, smells and bugs grow out from the trash. Evolving from its predecessor, Waste House, this machine can also intake kitchen waste as it is equipped with a sensor. Whenever the machine is 80% full, it will contact a cleaning company for cleanup. Vendors may also monitor the machine through an app. As for now, this is the first machine using the IoT to collect waste. We're operating the machines in Taipei City, and everyone's watching us to see if this model is suitable for their own country. So actually, if we start promoting iTrash in Taipei City, many countries including Southeast Asia or Japan are actually watching over our service system. The iTrash machine provided flexibility to citizens who cannot cooperate with the garbage truck's time. This invention has also made disposing garbage more eco-friendly and trendy. In Malaysia, two fabric factory owners have initiated their workers to make protective clothing to be sent for the frontline medical workers. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you and goodbye.